crap! Uh... I have been trying to get this from this freaking content for over a year now. Uh, yeah. Cast lot. On my last video, I talked about how the Trove system had an update announced and we were unsure what items were being added and how it was going to affect the game. I mentioned that I had been saving silver vouchers for a while and was planning to test out all the new additions. Since then, the update has dropped, and the community has mixed feelings about how good those changes are. In this video, I'm going to go over what items were added and the important pieces of information about what changed. Then I'll wrap up with my opinion on its impact to the game. Timestamps will be provided below to help you get to the information you're looking for, but first a word from our sponsor. No one. That's right, there is no sponsor because I haven't even hit 1k subscribers yet. Subscribe, people. Okay, so let's get to the five new items added in this patch. First, we have the Srauta Necklace. This necklace adds what we understand to be 20 potency to bar status spells such as bar paralyze, but takes away 50% from the duration modifier. Because this type of potency is a hidden effect, the best bet is that this item adds 20% resistance to the specified ailment to regular mobs and 10% against NMs, placing it as best in slot for status resist spells. Next, we have the Srauta Belt. For Paladin, this offers a cure potency of 35% out of the 50% cap already easily obtained in a Paladin's cure sets, making it add MP cost for no real benefit. For Rune, the added regen potency and duration are very reasonable for solo play, because in party situations, usually the white mage is the one casting regen. So this item doesn't currently have much appeal, except in a possible future where Rune subs Paladin and maybe casts cure on itself. Next is the Srauta Ring. This is a ring built for physical weapon skills with strength modifiers, like the rarely used Savage Blade, for example. Ooh. The extra attack gained by the number of trusts you have summoned makes this a unique ring for solo play as well. Unlike the previous items on this list, this ring is not only best in slot, but it is usable on a large variety of jobs. Likely this is the best item of the bunch. Now the pet-based item, Srauta Earring. This item is a little tricky to read, the short explanation is this ring offers the wearer 7% double attack as long as you have a pet alive. Likely best in slot for non-mythic weapon users that are listed on this piece. As far as the additional pet damage, it could potentially be very good on summoner physical BPs or certain puppet configurations. Lastly is the Srauta Taflum. At first glance, I saw magic crit rate 2 and was prepared for this to be bad. Magic crit rate 1 is an archaic stat that isn't put into sets purposely in today's endgame. However, it seems that this ammo is in a league of its own. Early tests show this thing grants a 10% chance to add 25% damage to your magic spell or weapon skill, likely overtaking other options on average. Sadly, this isn't equipable by my favorite magic weapon skill job, Warrior. All five of these items were added to the rare drop pool, meaning you can only get them from opening a loud thud. Remember, the three chest rarities are loud thud, thud, and a noise. These messages yield one item from their respective treasure pools when you touch the gold chest and leave. With the addition of these items, the rest of the loot pools have also changed significantly as well. Omen drops have been added to each of these rarities while Eshka gear has largely been removed. The thud pool has been expanded with dynamic shards and more valuable crafting mats. The loud thud pool seems to have undergone the largest array of changes with the addition of Dynamis Voids and High Tier Battlefield drops spanning Odin, Alexander, Lilith, Shinryu, and Kate More about this at the end of the video, but for now, the technical changes. First up is a quality of life update. You can now trade your used orbs to Grayson, so you no longer have to question if the orb in your inventory is dead or not. He will then reward you with either an apple or orange juice, a copper voucher, an SP gobby key, or very rarely he will recharge your orb to be used a second time. While rare, the recharge is a nice bonus, regardless of being a little rude, giving us non-stackable items to throw away. The first big change I want to talk about is one I don't hear a lot of people bringing up, but it is a very helpful one, and that is a message on center chests. Some players held the philosophy that instead of opening chests, you should just use the orb, walk in, open the gold chest, and leave citing examples of times they've gotten omen bodies or other rare items, and there's no danger of Kathwak. This led some players to assume that the center chest itself contained either a noise, thud, or loud thud. Well, now we know that to be true. 
as every time you open the center chest, it tells you what rarity your drop is, confirming previous suspicions and overall providing more information to the player. The next piece of the update is quite a surprising one, and that is the addition of rainbow chests. A rainbow chest will always contain a loud thud and only spawns under two sets of circumstances. The first is if you open eight chests, one of the remaining two chests will convert to a rainbow. While you do have to get lucky to not get kathwacked up to that point, at least they've added a guarantee. I've heard reports of players spawning a gold chest instead, which yields a thud, but I've personally gotten rainbow every single time I've gotten that far. The second circumstance seems to only happen on Venus orbs, but some number of the time there will be a rainbow chest already spawned when you start the trove. A welcome gift, although seemingly pretty rare. Overall, this addition alone adds an interesting element to what was a very dry piece of content. Open chests, maybe get good drops, maybe die or leave early. But now it has some player agency and high roll elements. Next up is an all new message called Belligerent Bang. This one has a sort of storied history on my Twitch channel as we sought to decode what exactly this tells you about your chests. When talking to Grayson, the Trove NPC, he mentions that this message is useful for triangulating loud thuds. It's this word triangulating that set me on a path of trying to discern exactly which chest is the good one, leading to moments like these. We're rarely getting to the point where we'll get new information. I haven't gotten belligerent enough times. I've been trying, I've been, I've been here, you know? And until we get more belligerent messages, I won't be able to prove or disprove this theory. Well, after a whole day of testing and deliberating, I've come up with what I believe is the right answer. It also happens to be the simplest. When you see a belligerent bang message, it means there is a loud chest in one of the remaining unopened chests, specifically not the terminal coffer. You will see this message on each subsequent opening as long as a loud thud remains. Grayson tells you that you'll get this message after three chests, but I've also observed the message showing up on the fourth instead. One of the interesting aspects of this is that you can see the belligerent message on a loud thud, meaning there is an additional loud thud still left in the pool. This message can show up on a Mars orb, but isn't likely. However, I have yet to find a time where this message did not show up on a Venus orb that had a loud thud in the pool, meaning that a Venus orb will always tell you when a loud thud is present with this message. If you have proof of a loud thud after the fourth chest, on a Venus orb without seeing the belligerent bang message, comment below and let me know about it. So on my live stream, we opened over 30 Mars and 30 Venus orbs and hit maybe 20 loud thuds. I ended the day with a pair of Malignant's boots, five million gil reward twice, Volt muffles, a pulse weapon, and a sheer harness, and a good deal of sellable items worth another 10 to 15 million. So what is my opinion here? Well, more loud thuds is great. More informed decision-making is great. Rainbow chess, belligerent message, they're interesting and they make the content more engaging. But what on earth happened to the treasure pool? The loud thud pool is atrocious. There are 22 jobs in the game, each of which has a Dynamis Void Shard for each armor slot. So that's 110 items added to the rare pool most of which aren't even worth listing on the AH. Now I'm grateful for the items I did get. Malignant's boots and a sheer harness have been white whales of mine for quite some time. But how does somebody do 60 orbs and not add a single one of the new items into the economy, whether I was going to use them or not? Overall, I like the engagement added by this update and had a blast checking out the new features with my Twitch stream but I just can't shake the feeling that my orbs would have been better spent pre-update on a much less diluted pool. Sound off in the comments below on your experience and let me know your opinion on whether or not this was a good update. Lastly, I'd like to thank my patrons here on screen. You can check that out in the links below if you wanna become a patron as well to support this channel, my live stream and more Final Fantasy XI content. And until next time, take care. Come on, good loot. Defiant Sweat, was that my reward? 
A shiro harness? <gasps> Holy oh, crap! Yes. <laughs> uh. I have been trying to get this from this freaking content for over a year now. Uh, yeah. Cast lot. <laughs> 